Hello, my furniture friends. I picked up this six drawer dresser from my local Habitat for Humanity Restore, and I'm gonna use it as the base for a whole new design. This is a mid-century modern style piece that's got really incredible hardware and other than a few minor dings around the edges is in great clean condition, but it's made completely of laminate or this plasticky paper veneer over top of hardboard. Even these dovetailed drawers, which are usually a sign of good quality, are built out of plywood with a layer of fiberboard on either side. It's still a nice sturdy piece of furniture though, so I think it's a great choice to play around with a complete redesign. I thought that maybe these drawers were in the wrong spot because of that handle down at the bottom. So I switched them around on this side. And that doesn't look right either. Weird. I always start these projects by removing the drawers and the hardware and just inspecting all of the different pieces and parts to either make sure they're good or add them to my list of repairs. I checked on each drawer slide and all the nylon guides since those are pretty often broken and need replacing, but that's not the case today. So I'm just gonna keep going. And I definitely wanted to reuse this hardware. So I just popped it all into a cup until I was ready for it again. I vacuumed up the dust in the bottom and then washed everything with some Simple Green, which is a great degreasing cleaner that's gonna break up any old dirt or furniture polish residue that's stuck to the surface. These legs are about the only solid wood part of this thing. So I unbolted them and set them aside so that I could sand them down later and see what was hiding under this solid brown paint. And while I had the dresser laying flat, I wanted to put the drawers back in place and try and lay out a new design idea that popped into my head. Those handles were giving me sunshine vibes, so I thought maybe I could use those on the top two drawers instead and then create sort of a raised sun ray design on the bottom drawers. I had a few of these strapping off cuts from another project, so I laid those out to help me visualize my plan a bit better. So here's what I was thinking. I wanted to keep a dark wood finish on those top two drawers and on the legs, and then I could create my pattern on the bottom drawers and paint those and the body in a creamy white color. So it's bright, but not so literal as painting it yellow would be. Off to Home Depot to collect a few supplies. I decided on Bear's Aged Beige. I know, boring beige, sue me, but I love it. And I had that mixed into my favorite bare paint for furniture, which is this Alkyd enamel. Then I hit up the trim aisle and grabbed a few of these pine half rounds and a roll of this veneer so that I could try and turn those two top MDF drawer fronts into something that I could stain. When I got back, I knew that all of these hardware holes weren't gonna work with my new placement of things. So I put a piece of masking tape on the inside of each drawer and then mixed up some epoxy style wood filler to fill them all the way through. And I used a bit more of the same filler to fix the missing chunk of edge banding and a couple of small scratches around the body as well. Once the filler was cured all the way, I sanded that smooth and then continued to scuff up the rest of the shiny surfaces to create some micro texture for my primer to be able to grab onto.
I wiped the two drawers that I wanted to add that veneer to down with some denatured alcohol and then tried to hype myself up to glue that stuff down. I have never done a full surface of veneer before and I already knew that this stuff from Home Depot wasn't the greatest quality or the easiest to use, so I honestly didn't have high hopes. Okay. Okay. This says clean wood surface, which veneer will be applied to. Apply a very thin layer of glue to the wood surface to which veneer will be glued. Apply veneer to surface. Make sure no glue bubbles or air bubbles are under the wood veneer. Make sure the wood veneer is properly aligned to your satisfaction. To ensure proper adhesion, apply pressure over total veneer surface. Uh, apply a piece of wood between clamp and veneer surface. We recommend any top quality non-water-based glue or solvent-based cement. Okay, that's clamped as well as I can. Fingers crossed. It is too, it's lumpy. It is a lumpy, a bumpy. Dang it. Big bubble there. And there. And over here. I think if I'm gonna do this, especially as a beginner, I need to invest in <laughs> some better quality veneer um, that's a little bit easier to use. So I'm gonna scrape this off and we're just gonna paint all the drawers. And that's gonna be how it is. Once I had that smoothed back out, I dragged out my miter saw so that I could change focus and start chopping up the half rounds and focus on my sunray design. I just cut down a few strips at a time and then measured out equal distances, made a little pencil mark for myself and then glued and nailed each piece right into place and I just kept working my way out from the center with whatever spacing looked right. When I had everything attached, I grabbed my multi-tool with a flush cut blade on it just to separate the drawers from each other. And then I took each one over to my workbench and cleaned up those cuts a little bit more. I filled in the nail holes with a little bit of lightweight wood filler. And once that was dry, I used my sander to get each dowel piece perfectly flush with the edges of the drawers and smoothed out all of the filler on the dowels by hand. I wanted to fill in any leftover gaps there were where the dowels met the drawer fronts to create a completely seamless look. So I used a little bit of paintable caulking down the sides of each one and cleaned up all the excess just with a damp finger and a shop towel. And then I was ready to prime this thing. Mm -hmm. 
This shellac based primer is what I use on pretty much every furniture piece that I paint. It's great at bonding to slick surfaces like this laminate, and it's also gonna create a unified surface over all of the different textures I'm working with, like the raw wood dowels, the sanded down MDF, and whatever's left of the original finish so that my paint will lay evenly across everything. This stuff dries super fast, so it was ready for a quick smooth out with some 400 grit sandpaper after about 30 minutes, and then I got ready to paint. I laid out my drop cloth and wrapped the drawers with some masking plastic, and then I loaded up my spray gun with the enamel. I always try to pour my paint through a filter because even though this is a brand new can, you can sometimes still get little clumps of junk in there that just wreak havoc when you're trying to spray a finish. And even though this paint says not to thin it, I did add a tiny splash of water just to get it flowing better. I turned the air pressure coming out of my compressor down to about 40 PSI pulled out a bunch of hose, hooked up my gun, and then tested out all of the spray settings on a piece of scrap wood. Once I had everything dialed in, I moved over and sprayed on my first coat. This Alkyd enamel is pretty much an oil-based paint, but it's in a water-based formula, so soap and water cleanup and really low VOCs. It is super durable and scrubbable stuff with a nice satin finish that's rated for interior or exterior use and doesn't need any additional top coating, which I love. It's also really good at leveling itself out so you can get a fantastically smooth finish by brushing it or rolling it on if spraying isn't an option for you. It needs anywhere from four to six hours to dry before recoating, and they recommend two coats for optimal performance. While my sun rays dried in the beautiful sunlight, I figured out my plan B for the top drawers. I wasn't ready to give up my design idea for the dark wood look, so I grabbed this can of Retikit's wooden primer in their dark wood color to help me create the wood look that I wanted so badly. This is again a super tough product rated interior exterior, and it's actually got real wood fibers right in the paint, so you can stain it pretty much just like the real thing. I brushed on a layer over each drawer front and then dragged their rubber graining tool through it to create a slightly raised grain pattern. I know it looks terrible now, but you have to trust the process with this stuff. And because I wanted the legs to match these drawers, I did the same thing on them. Once that first layer was dry, I brushed on another coat right on top to fill in the color and let that dry while I gave my first coat of paint a quick smooth with some more 400 and then sprayed on my final coat. I don't ever clean out my gun in between coats of paint and I've never had an issue with it. I just pick off the little paint booger that dries on the tip and then I'm ready to go again. Again, while I found myself watching paint dry, story of my life, I grabbed this water-based wood stain in the color Antique Walnut, a foam brush, and a larger soft bristled brush to finish off the wood effect. I brushed a layer of this over each surface and then really quickly before it started to dry down, I grabbed my big dry brush and just pulled it through that stain going in the direction that I wanted my wood grain to go back and forth until it started to tack up a bit just wiping off any excess on a rag so that my brush stayed nice and dry and was picking up any of that excess color. That first layer of textured wood grain that I did really just catches the pigment and helps to sell the wood look, I think. I was so ready to call it a day at this point, so I poured the leftover paint back into the can and took all of my brushes and my gun from the day inside to wash them out in the utility sink. The next morning, I needed to seal up the wood pieces, so I reloaded my cleaned out gun with some of this matte polyurethane and sprayed two coats over all of that. 
and once it was dry, I needed to figure out where to drill the new hardware holes. I had these poles that sit over the top edge of the drawers, so I don't have to interrupt my new pattern too much with hardware. And since the original handles are just painted metal to begin with, I gave them all a wash with my simple green and scuffed them up and then painted them all to match with this satin bronze metallic spray. Here's a reminder of the little laminate dresser that I started with. It's okay, but a little beat up and kind of blah. And now it looks like this. It's definitely a unique design with a little bit of flair, but still neutral and timeless enough that I think it could easily fit into a lot of modern homes. I know I love the way it turned out and I got to spend some quality time doing something that genuinely makes my heart happy and bring you along for the ride. I'm gonna leave a few more mid-century style furniture makeovers here for you to watch next, and I will catch you all next time.